Hello, so the uh, se uh, Securing a Strong Retirement Act of, 22, of 2022 was passed, uh, better known as the Secure Act 2.0, um, just after Christmas, before the new year. We've got some highlights from you, or for you, uh, from a few different uh, resources here. Um, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of changes for uh, savers, whether you be or in retirement or approaching retirement. Um, so I'm gonna kind of jump all over the place uh, a little bit, but uh, hopefully you'll follow along. You always put questions in the comments below. Um, so beginning in 2025, they're gonna start uh, with some exceptions for small businesses uh, requiring 401k and 403b plans to automatically enroll eligible participants starting at a minimum of at least 3% uh, of their income going into the 401k and they'll be increasing that annually to at least 10 if not more than, but not more than 15%. So what, what this means is if you get a job at a company, you don't sign up for the 401k, as soon as you're eligible for the 401k, which is typically three months to a year, uh, the company would be required to automatically pull money from your check to put into your 401k plan at a minimum of 3% and then probably do an increase of like 1% or 2% per year until you get to 10 or 15%. Um, honestly, you should be saving at least 10% as a default in the beginning anyway. Uh, your employees can opt out if they don't want to do that though. Um, they are going to allow, beginning in 2024, uh, 401k plans or 403b plans uh, penalty-free distributions of up to $1,000 per year will not be subject to the usual 10% tax. So you would pay income tax potentially, but you're not going to pay the 10% penalty. However, if you do not repay the distribution uh, within a certain time frame, you'll have to wait three years before being allowed to take another emergency distribution. Um, uh, honestly, you should have money in savings accounts before you ever start saving into retirement. I don't know that $1,000 really helps uh, anyone particularly, but it sounds like it's a uh, path forward to increase that over time. Um, this is interesting. So if you have a student loan and you're not saving, uh, employers are now considered uh, having to match dollars into the 401k plan as long as the employee is paying their student loan payments. So let's say you pay $500 a month in student loan payments but you don't contribute to the 401k plan, the company was now required to consider that $500 that you're paying toward your, um, uh, toward your student loans as if you were contributing it to the 401k plan, but you're not, but that they would match that in, inside the 401k plan. That starts in 2024. I can only imagine the administrative nightmare to, uh, to make sure that the person is actually paying the loan uh, and then what that match would be going forward. Um, Let's see, required minimum distribution age is raised. This is probably the biggest impact for our clients. Right now it's 72. If you remember a few years ago, it was 70 and a half. People are living longer. Uh, so the government is allowing um, the mandatory RMDs to come out at an older age. So starting in this year, 2023, the minimum distribution age is now 73. And then in 2033, 10 years from now, the RMD will move to age 75. Um, it is neat uh, to note in, in the documents themselves, there's an error uh, in that if you were born in 1959, if you read the rules, uh, you would actually have to take out money at 73 and 75, which doesn't make sense. So they're going to have to fix that uh, at some point uh, in the rules. Uh, one of the things we work with a lot of clients with is, is you know, that last few years prior to retirement is really getting as much in the plan as uh, retirement plans as we can. Beginning in 2025, the uh, catch-up provisions. So right now it's uh, 22,500 is the max you can put into a 401k, and then you're allowed to put another 6,500 in. In, 20, in 2025, those uh, catch-up provisions will move to 10,000 per year uh, in addition to the, to the base. Um, and then after you turn 60, uh, 60, 61, or uh, 62 or 63, um, you can put 50% more of that. So that'd be 15,000 in addition that you can add to your uh, 401k plan. Uh, beginning in 2024, the legislation would index the IRA catch-up contributions uh, at $100 increments. 
So right now, catch up contributions for an IRA, it's just $1,000. Uh, beginning in 2024, it'll be 1,100, 1,200, 1,300 going forward. Um, beginning in this year, in 2023, there is no such thing as a simple Roth, or there's simple IRAs, but there is no simple Roth. There's no SEP, there are SEP IRAs, but there are no SEP Roths. Now, uh, the IRS or the uh, Congress has allowed for the IRS to recognize a, a Roth contribution to a simple and a SEP plan. Um, this is the part that I, I think this is a tax on probably most of our clients. Beginning in 2024, the required minimum uh, distributions for designated Roth accounts will be uh, eliminated and all catch-up contributions to qualify retirement plans will be treated as Roth contributions. So what this means is right now, if you're working, you're getting um, uh, a 401k, well, you get your 401k match, you put in the maximum, then you do the catch-up. The catch-up cannot be pre-tax. Your catch-up has to go into the Roth portion of your 401k starting in 2024, unless you make less than 145,000 a year. So what that means is higher wage earners, um, you're gonna have to pay additional tax. You won't get that tax benefit. And at that age, for catch up, it really doesn't benefit you to do a Roth. You really should be pre-tax. Uh, so this is the government, government's way of clawing back uh, some tax revenue and actually hurting those that are saving the most. Uh, penalty fee rollovers from 529 plans. You can also uh, start converting your 529 plan that you didn't use into a Roth IRA. Um, it will, is capped at $35,000 and you had to have had the plan in for about 15 years. Um, you can look for a article from uh, Missy Beach. We can probably link that below uh, where she goes into more detail on how to, on how to, uh, on how to, how to do that. Um, Bottom line is uh, those are some pretty drastic changes. Uh, another another change they talked about was uh, being able to contribute to um, your 401k matching could be done in the Roth now instead of having to do it all in pre-tax. So for younger people, that could be an advantage. Um, if you're past the age of 50, uh, most likely there you could see a little more tax if you're using the catch-up contributions. Um, but all in all, I think most people um, who are not high wage earners are probably benefiting from the SECURE Act. Uh, for those of us who are not, um, there's not a whole lot of advantage other than the mandatory IRA distribution being pushed out a year um, is probably beneficial to some people. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to answer them for you.